Welcome back, this is Jennifer and I am glad you're here. Today I thought I'd show you how to make an impression with hot foil plates on your cards. Now hot foil plates are meant to be used with a foil machine, but not everyone has a foil machine or they may be looking for different ways to use their foil plates. More and more companies are coming out with great hot foil plate options, so I thought I would focus today on ways to use them creatively, mostly to make an impression, but also to stamp, heat emboss, and much more. If you do not have a hot foil plate, don't worry. I will mention along the way which of these techniques can be done with regular dies also. Okay, so hot foil plates. Generally, they look like this. They have raised areas like a die, but they're not sharp. They're usually solid raised areas, and those are the areas in which you would get foil. So in this case, you would get these thin stripes. I think it's best to see how this works with the foil machine, then we'll use it without. So I'm using the Spellbinders Glimmer hot foil machine today. There are a few different machines out there and you just need to pick whichever one would work with whatever particular die cut machine you have. So that gray portion gets hot. You first warm up your machine, you turn it on, you let it warm up. When it's ready, you put your foil plate onto the gray area with the pretty design facing up. Then you place your Glimmer Hot Foil pretty side down onto the plate. Then you put a piece of cardstock, whatever you want to apply the foil to. And then you apply the two shims that come with the Glimmer machine. You press the button and when the light stops flashing, you're ready to take out all of those platforms and shims and bring it through your die cut machine. The die cut machine I'm using today is the Platinum 6. This is a great machine. So the foil machine provides the heat, the die cut machine provides the pressure, and together this does a beautiful job applying foil to cardstock. There happen to be a few ways you can use the Glimmer machine. You can check the instruction manual, but if you want to see more on how I use it, I will link to a video up here on the top right. And in that video, I show how to use regular dies with your foil machine for thin line foiling. So now we have this beautiful piece, but we can still use the negative space. To do this, I like to use the Pink Fresh Studio solid hot foil plate. You could see it's laying on my foil machine. I put the extra foil face down on it, a piece of cardstock, two shims, press the button. When the timer's done, I take that all out and feed it through my die cut machine. I have a video more on this using that negative space leftover foil, and I'll link to that one up here on the top right too. I just wanted to briefly mention this here, as I think that solid hot foil plate from Pink Fresh is a great investment, and it is back in stock. So now look at that negative space didn't go to waste, and I have this background I can save for another project. Now that we've reviewed how a hot foil plate is meant to be used with a foil machine, let's go ahead and use a hot foil plate without the foil machine. And for this example, I'm making a faux letterpress look. I'm pressing ink onto the background of our cardstock and it is a beautiful look. I'm gonna show many other techniques in this video. So I have my die cut machine here and I'm gonna get it ready for this technique. What I found worked best with this die cut machine and this technique is to put a cardstock shim down onto the platform. I then put down a metal adapter plate, which is really handy and something I recommend for any die cut machine. Then I put down the embossing mat. Most machines come with one of these. It's very flexible and allows you to make impressions with dies or foil plates. Then I can put my cardstock down on top of that. Whatever cardstock you want to use is definitely okay. And I'll give some tips on getting great results throughout this video. Next, I'm using my Tim Holtz Brayer to apply a dye ink to the raised areas of our hot foil plate. So you can apply ink to this going direct with from the pad to the plate, but you might get into the valleys of the hot foil plate, and I really only want the ink on the raised areas. So I applied this light green ink to the raised areas, and now I'm laying this down carefully onto my cardstock, making sure I don't shift it when I lay it down. I then put a cutting plate on top and run that through. And what happens is the hot foil plate makes an impression into the cardstock and it leaves that green ink before behind. So look at this, you get this beautiful texture to the background, the back even looks good too. And you have the ink left in those little valleys. So it looks kind of like a letterpress. 
Now this is a very subtle version of this technique. I'll show more variations and other ways to do this throughout the video. But in this case, I wanted a subtle background. And in real life, there's a lot of texture to it. Now to finish off this card, I used the new Spellbinders Lemon Zest die set. I thought this was a great die set, different than anything I already had. So I took this off with my die cut machine and did a bunch of die cutting so I could make multiple cards, just using various colors of yellow cardstock and green cardstock. I glued different layers together so I would have dimensional die cuts and have lots of pieces ready to go. I had trouble finding the right color of yellow cardstock for my lemons, so I just went with a light yellow, and then I applied some wild dandelion ink from Gina K Designs around the edges, just to give it a little bit more color and also make them pop. Sometimes just adding ink to the edges of die cuts adds the look of dimension. So I also did the same with the leaves that I've created. Now that all the pieces for the card are ready, let's assemble. Now if you look at the background, the white background, you'll notice there is a nice green trim around it, a thin mat. I know a lot of folks have trouble measuring and getting mats just right. If you're one of those, I recommend the new Spellbinders Precision Layering Dies. There are two A2 die sets, two mini slimline die sets, and I believe they have two A7 die sets. For this card, I'm using the two A2 layering die sets. Between the two sets set of a size, you get a bunch of rectangles that are very close in size. So you can pick two rectangle dies close in size, cut one panel from one, one panel from the other, and you'll have a nice mat. So in this case, I had cut my white piece using one rectangle die. Then I used a slightly larger die to cut the green piece. And when I glue those together, I get a beautiful green mat that just peeks out the outside edge. Now you could definitely do this with the trimmer on your own, but I know some folks struggle with that. So I wanted to mention that these layering dies are available and they have tons of sizes. So it's really handy for creating those thin mats. I like to use liquid adhesive so I can wiggle it till it's in just the right position. Now for a sentiment, I use one of my favorites, the Spellbinders Layered Mix and Match Sentiments. There are the words, happy birthday, thank you, love, two, four, hello, and then some flowers and leaves. And the shadow dies are included. I love the size and style of these. For a little sentiment strip, I use the Photoplay Kindness stamp set, and I chose to brighten your day. Okay, so now we can assemble the card. I added our faux letterpress background piece onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding green note card. And I've added some of our lemon and leaf die cuts. I wanted the leaves to extend all the way to the top of the card. So I cut some leaves off of a second die cut and added those to the top. And where the two leaf pieces uh, matched in the metal, middle, I covered uh, that up with another lemon. So it just creates a fuller look on my card. I finished this off by adding a hello die cut along with a white heat embossed sentiment strip. The hello die cut, I cut the word hello from white and then cut the shadow from black, which is opposite of what I usually do and it really makes it stand out. Then the white heat embossed sentiment is on black cardstock. I also added a few white flower die cuts to the little lemon cluster and those little dies are included in the same lemon zest die set and also added some yellow pearls to the center of the flowers. Now, if you look closely, you'll see that texture in the background. Those stripes make a really great impression and have the light green ink along it. This is a great way to take your hot foil plate and use it for a different look. Before we do another make an impression technique, I wanted to use that foiled background I made at the beginning. So I used one of the precision layering dies from Spellbinders from the mini slimline set and cut a piece out of that foil background. Then I chose a rectangle die slightly larger and cut that from green so I could have that nice green mat once again. I'm adding this on to a light green mini slimline note card that I made myself that is three and a quarter inches by six and a quarter inches. I love this size. For a sentiment, I'm using another of my favorite Spellbinders die sets. This is just a tweet. It has layered bird dies, some balloons, some flowers, lots in this one, and some layered word dies. So you can do just a note or just a tweet. I decided to use just a note, a new favorite sentiment of mine, and add that with black and white cardstock right to the center of our little lemon cluster. So on this card, I use that stripe hot foil plate to do foiling. 
Whereas on the last card, I used the same hot foil plate just to make an inked impression. So it's fun to be able to stretch your supplies that way and get a different look. And I'll demonstrate more of this throughout the video. Okay, for my next example, I'm using a different hot foil plate background. This time, I'm not gonna foil with it at all. Instead, I'm just going to do two variations of the make impression technique. This is the Spellbinder Scatter Dot Pattern Plate. Looks beautiful foiled, but we're gonna ink it instead. Now let's first do it the same way we did our last example. Now this time I'm creating a little hinge on the side of the plate so that I can tape my cardstock to it. So I can flip the cardstock open kind of like a book. This allows me to do multiple inkings of the background. I also this time am using a wet cloth just to add a little bit of moisture to my cardstock on both sides. This will prevent any cracking of the cardstock. If you have cracking with your cardstock, this is a great thing to do to protect your paper. Okay, so now I'm using a brayer and some dye ink and rolling that ink onto the raised areas of our hot foil plate. I will then close this like a book and run it through our machine and I have the same sandwich that I did before. Now notice here, I put it upside down. I should have the cardstock up against the brown mat. I'm gonna run it through, just ignore this, we're gonna do it again. I didn't realize it at the time, but mistakes happen and we can keep going. Okay, so this did transfer some of the ink, but it didn't make much impression because I had it upside down. So let's do it again. I'm rolling more ink onto it, then I'll close it like a book and run it through the correct way this time. That's the advantage of having that tape along the side creating a hinge. That way every time I close it up, it'll close into the same position. So I know the ink and the impression will go in the same spot each time. So this also will allow you to do multiple passes in case your ink doesn't completely transfer, it's a little splotchy. And look at that fun look. I mean, this gives deep impression. It's like an embossing folder, sometimes even better. To make it even darker, I'm repeating another time. By the way, you can use a variety of dye or pigment inks for this technique, so try whatever you have. Now this one's beautiful, but I wanted to show you another thing you can do. So this time I'm not inking up the hot foil plate, I'm just making an impression without the ink. I once again am using a wet cloth just to moisten both sides of the cardstock. You don't want it sopping wet, just a little bit of water to it, so it kind of warps a little bit, just a tiny bit. Then I'm putting that onto the embossing mat and my hot foil plate down on top of that. No ink this time. And we'll run it through using the same, uh, same sandwich that I used earlier in this video. Now, as I do this, I'm making an impression without the ink, which is another great way to use your hot foil plates, just adding texture to the background, as you see here. Both sides are great. The back is raised, and the front has the little dimples. I really liked the side where the bumps or the dots are raised, so I thought I would use a brayer to apply ink to those raised areas. Now here I'm using two different colors of peach. I had a darker peach still on my brayer, and now I'm adding a lighter peach. And look at that, I was easily able to roll ink onto the raised areas only. Using a brayer is definitely an advantage because it won't go into the nooks and crannies or the valleys. It just ends up on the raised areas. So that's what we did on the left. The one on the right is where, what we did before when we inked up the hot foil plate and pressed it in. So it's two different looks from one hot foil plate and not using any foil. I decided to use the background where the dots are raised and we used a brayer to apply the ink on top. I also used a hot foil plate for the sentiment. You can actually stamp and make an impression with sentiment hot foil plates. For this, I'm using the Build a Banner set from Spellbinders. This includes hot foil plates and dies. I'll show you how to use them with foiling here in a moment, but first I'm just going to take one of the sentiments and show you how to use it with like a letterpress look. I used one of the banner dies to create a little white die cut and I'm putting it on top of my embossing mat. I'm using the same sandwich as before except I'm removing the cardstock shim. We don't want too much pressure with this because it's a really detailed sentiment. So all I have is the platform, the metal shim, and my embossing mat. Now I'm taking the thank you hot foil plate and I put some adhesive on the back of it, just a little temporary tape runner, and I put it onto a piece of scrap cardstock so I could hold on to it. This is just helpful in picking it up because we're gonna put ink on it and we don't want to mess that up. 
Now I'm using my brayer to apply ink onto it. Again, I think a brayer is really helpful here and just using a dye ink. Then I'll pick this up by the cardstock and just lay it down onto my die cut. You wanna put it down and not shift it because you don't wanna mess up the ink. Now I'll put my cutting plate on top and run that through. So the ink will transfer and it'll make an impression onto our little banner die cut, which is a fun alternative to using that hot foil plate to do foil. So look at that faux letterpress look, it is wonderful. Now if you want the ink to be darker or maybe you didn't ink it completely, you can repeat the process. It's pretty easy to line up your sentiment with what you've already done. It kind of fits in like a puzzle. But if you have trouble with that, I have another way of doing this method later in this video. I wanted to show a lot of options because I feel that we do better creatively when we find many ways to use our supplies. All right, so there we have a bold letterpress look for this sentiment. I also use the new Spellbinders Be Bold Blooms die set. This is a new one and I'm crazy about it. You'll see I use it a lot in this video. This is a great flower and leaf die set because there are a variety of sizes and styles included. They're easy to do layering pieces and they have a lot of detail to them. So off screen, I did a bunch of die cutting and assembly of lots of different colors so I'd have a lot for this video. Now I'm using some of the peach ones for this card. I wanted a large floral cluster in the center of the card, so I started by gluing the three large flowers together, kind of like a triangle, and then I started gluing pieces coming out from that. That's one of the easiest ways to create a cluster. Start with the big elements in the middle and then build your way out. So you can see those three are glued together. I'm putting some glue dots at the back center of these so that I have room to tuck things under it. Once everything is in its the right position, I can go and squeeze liquid adhesive under anything that's not totally glued down, and I can be sure it'll hold up through the mail. I even used some of my leftover leaves from the lemon zest cards from earlier to add those into some of the openings on this bouquet. By the way, the background that I'm gluing all these pieces onto is the one we created by doing the impression with the hot foil plate. I flipped it over and used the brayer to add the ink to the raised dots. It really is a fun textured background for this. Now I'm assembling the rest of our little banner here with the sentiment and gluing that on top of the flowers. This build a banner set that I showed you is fun because you can do one, two, three, four, as many banners as you want. Here I did a one tier banner. Later I'll do a three tier banner. So now I can go and squeeze a little liquid adhesive around all the little pieces and I can be sure it'll stay. I used my precision layering dies from Spellbinders to cut a mat that is slightly bigger and then I added that onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding note card. So you can see there's a lot of dimension to this. I will mail this in a padded envelope, but I feel like this is kind of a work of art that they can put on display and something very special to give to someone. Here, looking up close, you can see that texture we got in the background by using a hot foil plate, but without the foil or foil machine. You could do the same technique with a background die. Use the die to make an impression on the cardstock, as we did with the hot foil plate. Then flip it over and use a brayer to add ink to the back and it'll add ink to the raised areas. So that's another way you can use your dies creatively too. Now before we move on to another version of the make an impression technique, I wanted to use this banner die set with foil so you can see how it's assembled. And we will make an impression on the background. This time I'm making a three tier banner. It's really cool looking. So I'm starting by doing the foiling first. So I'm taking all the foil plates from that set, putting it onto my hot foil machine, laying blue foil down pretty side onto the plates, then my cardstock, then the two shims, press the button when the timer's done, we take it all out, run it through our die cut machine to apply the pressure. And now we have our foiling done. Super fast, very easy. Last time I did the faux letterpress impression with it, this time we're doing the foiling. I had a little foil where I didn't want it, so I just used my sand eraser to remove it and it's good as new. I then used the coordinating dies that come in the set to cut the banners out from the foil pieces. I did cut additional die cuts so I could stack these up so they'd be nice and strong and have some dimension. 
So here is my middle banner piece. I'll take one of the striped pieces and glue them end to end. You'll see that the ends are at an angle and I just glue them together so that the ends are lined up together. So I put one kind of going up and then one kind of going down from our sentiment banner. So those little striped straight pieces just give a fun look to this banner, give a little look of dimension, very easy to assemble. Now this one will get glued to the top, meeting the ends to end over there on the right. And then we can glue one to the bottom also. Then we have these little ends that we can glue when we're done with our tiers. Now you could do as many tiers as you want. You could add stamp sentiments to the little banners instead of these foil sentiments. It's just one of those die sets that can be used in many ways. I love the look of this. I think it just has a nice, um, really professional look to it. And you can add anything around it that you want, maybe some balloons, flowers, whatever. Now for the background, I have a piece of light blue cardstock. I put a little bit of water on the front and the back. You can see there's a tiny bit of warping to that, not too much water. Then I put that on top of our regular sandwich. And this time I'm making an impression with that same stripe hot foil plate, but I'm not using ink this time, just making an impression. This gives the look of what you would get from an embossing folder but it's much more subtle. So if I had used this with foil or ink, it would have stood out more. I wanted something very subtle for this particular card. And look at that deep impression you get. You could use either side of this cardstock. I decided to use the side where the background is raised. I used one of the Spellbinders precision layering dies to create a mat for this from a darker blue cardstock and added it to a white note card that is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I'm now tucking some of the flowers in the little banner, kind of tucking them between the layers. And then we'll glue that to the center and then start having some of the leaves and flowers come out from the center. You can see once again, I'm starting with the bigger flowers towards the center and then working my way out from there. I thought it was fun to tuck some of these die cuts in the layers of the banner, really to pull it all together. You could definitely keep this a simpler design if you want. I just have so much fun putting all of these die cuts together and I really enjoy that process. So after adding all my flowers, here is a look at the completed card. So we have foiling on the banner itself. Then we have the impression we made with a foil plate on the background. You can see how those stripes really stand out nicely. So with this card, I'm just really using a lot of the same supplies to give another look because again, the more ways we use a product, the more fun we have creating. Okay, now remember how I just showed you how to make an impression with ink of a sentiment, of a hot foil plate sentiment? Well, this is another way to do it and it's very easy. So it's another option you can try. This time I'm using hot foil plates from Spellbinders. This is their February 2022 Glimmer of the Month. They have these incredible subscriptions you can sign up for. There's different ones. There's kits, stamps, dyes, glimmer plates, lots of different options. And I'll have the information on that below. I really like the sentiments in this one and I'll use a couple of them in today's video. I'm actually going to stamp with one of these hot foil plates. So I'm putting a few pieces of cardstock as a shim in the corner of my Misty stamping tool, then my cardstock on top. The reason I put those shims in there is the hot foil plate is pretty thin. I put some temporary adhesive on the back of my hot foil plate, centering it on my cardstock, closing the door on my Misty, and that will grab the hot foil plate. Now I can ink it up with either using the ink pad directly or a brayer and then stamp it a few times. I did it first with light ink and thought it was too light, so I decided to do it with a darker ink. And look at this, I get a great stamped result using a hot foil plate. No impression, nothing else, just stamping with it. I did decide I wanted to add the impression to it. You don't have to if you don't want to. So I'm lining it back up. It's easy to look from the side and see that you have it lined up. And I'll tape it there. Now I'm running it through my machine as I've done many times, same sandwich. It's the platform, cardstock shim, metal shim, embossing mat, cardstock, hot foil plate, and then the cutting plate on top. And now I made an impression on top of the ink and look at that beautiful letterpress look. Love that. So that's another way to get that faux letterpress look from a sentiment. On this card, I also use Spellbinder's February 2022 large die of the month set. 
This has everything to create a fun typewriter, lots of florals that you can put with it, different sentiments. So I started by creating a typewriter out of pool scraps of cardstock. And I also used some silver cardstock for the keys and such. Now I'm taking that pressed sentiment that we created and putting it right in the slot of the typewriter and look how cute that looks. For the background, I'm using the Spellbinders February 2022 embossing folder of the month. I really like that these embossing folders are large. I believe they're five and a half by eight and a half. So you can use it on slimline cards, five by seven cards, anything. I'm creating a five by seven card. So I glued this panel onto my five by seven card and then added the typewriter along with the little letterpress sentiment sticking out from it. And also added some of the leftover Be Bold blooms that I had from the cards I created earlier. So this one you could do again, maybe a birthday theme, have some balloons coming from it. You could put little critters on the typewriter, anything you want, but I enjoy creating those layered florals. So that's what I went with and check out the sentiment. We did that inked impression, which really just makes it stand out more, and in real life, it's beautiful. If you've never tried making an impression with a hot foil plate, you definitely need to give it a try. Okay, now let's do heat embossing with a hot foil plate. It gives a similar look to foil, but if you don't have a foil machine, this is a great option. So I'm again using the same glimmer set that I used on the last card, but this time using one of the other sentiments. I am setting up my Misty stamping tool with a few pieces of cardstock shim. I think I have three of them. And then my white cardstock on top of it that I want to do the heat embossing on. I'm putting some temporary tape runner on the back of my hot foil plate, positioning it on the center of my cardstock, closing the door on my stamping tool to grab it. And now I'm going to ink it up with Versamark ink instead of dye ink as I did before. So I use my anti-static powder tool first ink up that hot foil plate and stamp it. And I'm gonna do it a couple times just to make sure that I'm really transferring ink. Now this isn't really meant to stamp, so by repeating it a couple times, I can get better results. Now after I'm done with the hot foil plate, I'll just clean it and it's good to go for foiling or whatever else I want. Now I'm adding just gold embossing powder to it and heat setting it. So we kind of get the look of foil because it's that gold look. It does look different than when you foil but it's a fun option. Say you have colorful embossing powders you wanna use, you can use your hot foil plates for that also. Next, let's create the wreath to go around it. I use dies that are part of the Spellbinders February 2022 card kit of the month. Now here is the image from Spellbinders of all the things included in their card kit. You can see there's quite a bit in there. I just use the dies included to create the wreath. And here's a, look, a closer look at those dies. You can see there are a few of the word dies in that style that I like so much, but a little bit smaller. I'm not using them on this card because we already did our sentiment, but I am using that kind of curved wreath piece. It would be fun to use this just one kind of in the corner of a card, but I'm putting four of them together overlapped to create an oval around our sentiment. Now remember earlier I showed you this just a tweet die set. I use some word dies from this. Well, this time I'm using the dies to create a layered bird. I love this little layered bird so much. I actually made 175 of these birds for some Christmas tags that I made a couple months ago, and I had some of these birds left over, so I thought I would use one on this card. Very easy to assemble. It has lots of detail to it. I added the bird to the bottom right of our little wreath and added some leftover flowers and leaves that I had from before using that Be Bold Blooms die set. Now our white panel is matted with gold cardstock just to kind of match the gold embossing we used in the center and it's all glued onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. So on this one I used a hot foil plate to do heat embossing. I could have foiled it for a smoother, shinier gold, but this is just another fun alternative and allows you to use some of the heat embossing powders that you may have on hand. Just showing more ways to use those supplies that you may have. Now let's combine some of these techniques together and this time do foiling and making an impression at the same time. For this, I'm using the Spellbinders Glimmer Oval Plates. Now there are many of these available. There's ovals, circles, squares, rectangles. I decided to use the oval. I'm choosing one and putting it right in the center of my white cardstock background. You could use any cardstock for this. And I'm creating a hinge with some tape. 
in between the hot foil plate and the cardstock, I'm putting a piece of my hot foil, making sure the pretty side of the foil touches the pretty side of the plate, and I'm laying that down onto our hot glimmer machine. I then put on the two uh, shims on top, press the button. When it's done flashing, I can take that all out and run it through our machine. And now we can take the foil out from this, but I'm keeping the hot foil plate taped to our cardstock. So you see, I'm just kind of sliding it out there. So our foiling is done. We have these beautiful gold dots, but I'm gonna keep the hot foil plate there, tape it in place, and now run it through my die cut machine to make an impression. Using the same sandwich as before, I'm putting my cardstock and hot foil plate on top, running that through, and now we will have an impression where all the gold foil dots are. It's kind of hard to see in the video and definitely hard to see in the photo, but it's a wonderful way to add more detail, especially to a simple card. It definitely would be more impactful with some busier designs, but I wanted the focus of this to really be on the bouquet I'll put in the center. Now for that bouquet in the center, I'm using the older Spellbinders Bouquet of Flower die set. I had actually created a bunch of die cuts using this a while back and now it's time to put them to good use. It allows you to easily create a wrapped bouquet. I did the wrapping from craft cardstock, but vellum would also look nice. Now I'm just tucking into the wrapping my little die cuts. You could add other die cuts into this if you wanted to but I just did different greens, added some different colored flowers to it, and even some pearls. Once I was done creating the bouquet, I put glue on the back of it and added it to the center of our oval. Now that oval piece is matted with gold cardstock and added to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch pink note card. Now I wanted all those flowers to stay flat while they dry, so I put some tape on it temporarily. I finished off by adding a white heat embossed sentiment on black cardstock, and that is from the photo play stamp set I showed you at the beginning of this video. So you can see how that oval impressed dot circling our bouquet really brings the focus in and adds a little bit more elegance to the simple card design. Now there's a lot of texture there in the middle because I love adding all those layers, but you could put in less flowers and leaves if you want to eliminate some of that dimension. So if you have a foiling machine, next time you foil with a hot foil plate, try also making an impression with it afterwards to really make it stand out even more. And you can do all this using a die. If you want to learn how to hot foil with a die and make an impression, I will link to videos up here on the top right to check out. Here's another example where I used foiling and making an impression together, but this time I offset it a bit for a layered look. I'm once again using the skinny line hot foil plate that I used at the beginning of this video. And this time I'm foiling with silver foil onto pink cardstock, following the same basic foiling process. I absolutely love the look of foil on colored cardstock. I then just trim this down to be a workable size. And now I'm going to make an impression with ink using the same hot foil plate. So I have my sandwich set up in my die cut machine and I'm applying a light pink ink onto the raised areas of my hot foil plate. And I'll lay this down onto my cardstock, but I'm offsetting it from the silver stripes just a little bit so I can have a fun kind of layered look. Okay, so here you can see, I'm just gonna carefully lay it down so the stripes do not line up with what I have. They're parallel, but not on top of them. Then we put the cutting plate on top, run it back and forth, and we've now made an impression, a colored impression of pink stripes alongside of our hot foil stripes. I so wish you could really get an idea of the shine and texture of this. It is beautiful in real life. For a sentiment, I decided to cut hugs from the Spellbinders Be Bold Alphabet die sets. There's a lowercase, an uppercase, and a punctuation. I'll be using the lowercase here. Love this style of these letters, and I definitely will use them again in the future. So I cut the word hugs from white cardstock, and I'm using my Br Brutus Monroe stick and stamp mat to make sure I get the letters positioned evenly and straight. So I'm using the line on the mat just to kind of get that positioned how I want. Once I have the letters just right, I put a piece of tape on top of them and then peel that off of the sticky mat so that I can take all of those letters over to my project. Now up there you can see I glued my background onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. 
and then made a cluster of flowers in the center. I'm putting the glue on the back of all of my letters and then I'll add that right on top of our flowers. I can leave the tape on while it dries and once it's dry I just take the tape off and my letters are positioned just right. I really like that the background of this has foil and an inked impression. So you could do this with like the dots image that I did before or with like a floral image, but it definitely works really well with the stripe and really steps the background up quite a bit. And I think you can tell I really like those flower dies. Okay, now I have a bonus card for you. I just wanted to share it quickly. This is something that I love to do. I love to do stitching on a card, but I thought I'd show you how I did the background. It's just like we've done earlier. This time I'm using the flower pattern glimmer plate. This is a hot foil plate. I've created it like a hinge onto a piece of peach cardstock. This time I'm using white pigment ink. You can see how this goes on really well. And now we'll make an impression that will be white. Now I'm using a light cardstock, so the contrast won't be much. If you want the white to stand out more, use a darker color cardstock. But I thought it was nice and subtle with these soft colors. Look how beautiful that is. So you can also use your pigment inks, your white pigment inks and other things to do these inked impressions. Now to finish off this card, I used the Spellbinders February 2022 uh, small die of the month set. You get these different stitching dies. There's two ovals and then a border and then regular dies to cut them out or leave them whole. It's fun to have all these different options. I enjoy doing stitching, so I did some stitching while watching a Spider-Man movie with my son, and then I just added that to the center of our background. For sentiment, I used the Spellbinder Smooth Lines Mix and Match Sentiment Die Set. This is another one that I'll reach for often because of the style and the many sentiment options you can put together using these words. For this card, I did just a note again, and I cut it from black cardstock and glued it right in the center of our stitched oval. If you want to learn how to do stitching on cards, I will link to a video up here on the top right. Didn't want to add it into this long video, but you can check that out if you want to. I also added some gold and white pearls to the stitching, and there you can see the impression we did with the white pigment ink on the background. It's just a fun way to step up a simple background and add some texture. All right. There you have it, a really long video showing many of the things that you can do with hot foil plates in addition to foiling. I hope you'll give this a try and check out the other videos I mentioned because a lot of these techniques can be done with regular dies too. If you're interested in these supplies, I always have them linked below to multiple sources in my description below, but you can go to my blog for a lot more information. Here are two videos at the end that you can check out for more ideas. I thank you for spending this time with me. Have a wonderful day and I'll be back very soon with more ideas.